Hello everyone, it's Andrea and welcome to today's video. Today I'm coming at you with an anti-haul because I think it just very accurately represents my current state of mind and my current attitude when it comes to the beauty launches so far this summer. I always told myself in the back of my mind, you know, something will have to be really, really special and really exciting and alluring in order for me to really want to, to bite the bullet. So. There are things that I'm like vaguely interested in, but not interested enough to go out of my way to buy them. Let's save some money and let's talk about makeup that we can just appreciate from afar. Let's get started with the first thing on my list, which this already feels like old news, but it's the Makeup Forever HD Skin Twist. Now, initially when I first saw the press uh, images for this product, I got excited because I thought that it would be like a more cleverly packaged, mess-free version of the Givenchy Prism Libra powder. Three compartments of loose powder with, with different, different tints, different color correcting capabilities. And it's in this really, really clever twisty packaging that's very mess-free. There's like a hollow column inside and the powder will, you know, as you twist it, it the powder shows up in that column. And then that's just like the perfect the perfect width for you to put your brush in there, swirl your brush in there, get the powder, load it up on the brush, and then you can apply it to your face. So that just, that sounded intriguing and, and it was like a, like I said, a less messy version of this because this is one of my favorite products. It's my favorite setting powder, but it is so messy. As I was reading more about it, I realized that it's actually luminous and it's like shimmery. It's like a shimmery, loose powder that just took it out of the running for me 100%. I don't think I've seen a single positive review of it either. Next up, we have Valentino Beauty. Some more Valentino Beauty launches that I'm vaguely interested in, vaguely tempted by, but I ended up talking myself out of it every single time. I've anti-hauled Valentino Beauty before, and it's just... It just never, I don't know, it never, never gets me. The closest I've come to buying a Valentino Beauty product has been that bronzer that Andrea Ali keeps talking about. She uses, I think they have, they have it in, in a few different shades, but they have it in this weird compact that's almost like, it's designed like a purse, so you wear it cross body, and the compact is $250. And then you can just buy the refill for it, but then the refill is still super, super expensive. So you're you're paying, you're still paying a pretty penny for just this like cheap looking plastic case that uh, theoretically is supposed to belong in this luxurious $250 crossbody case. I don't know. The whole thing just seems so bizarre to me that they haven't launched the bronzer and and their uh, their setting powders in just a classic compact like the way that they have their blushes I don't know maybe that's gonna come later but it's also perpetually sold out so I just I just gave up on it it's the closest thing I've come to buying from Valentino Beauty everything else has been like it, it looks nice but it just I don't know I hear the blushes are amazing and I'm sure they are but you know what I don't know if, if I'm paying like over $50 on a blush I want to love every single thing about it and the Valentino Beauty packaging just does not do it for me. They also launched a concealer not too long ago that again, some people really like it, some people feel indifferent towards it. And here's the thing, am I in the market for a new concealer? Absolutely not. I'm very happy with the concealers that I'm currently using, um, you know, under the eyes. Most of the time I use the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Concealer under the eyes or I use the Colfi Main Match Concealer if, um, if I want a little bit more coverage. And good news, within the next month they will be launching a shade expansion for this concealer, which is exciting because this is really, really a beautiful concealer. So yeah, I've been happy with my under eye concealers. The one under eye concealer that is tempting me the most right now. The Chanel Sublimage Concealer, the one that comes in a little pot. That one looks looks really, really good. And I don't know, maybe once I use up my Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Concealer, then I can kind of justify splurging on the Chanel because God knows that is not that is not a cheap concealer. I will have to use something up in order for me to justify getting the Chanel. But in terms of the world of under eye concealers, that one is the most tempting to me right now. It seems to be a really great concealer option for those of us that uh, have more delicate skin 
and uh, we're, we're very particular about the textures of the products that we use under our eyes. The latest Valentino Beauty launch that I can see here is uh, the Liquid Lip and Blush, the Liquid Rosso. Two in one, you can use them on the lips and cheeks, soft blur matte finish in 12 shades. It sounds really fun. I love a multi-purpose product. The packaging almost reminds me of the YSL Tatouage lip inks. Do you remember those? Those were so good. I don't even know if they still make them. I don't think you could use those on the cheeks though. I know myself and I know that when it comes to a blush for the cheeks, love it to come in a pot. That is, that's my favorite type of packaging for a cream blush product. And I'm not going to go out of my way to buy something in a format that I know is not my favorite. You know, even if, even if I find a color that's really, really beautiful, chances are I can find that color in a, a pot packaging that I prefer. That's me talking myself out of Valentino Beauty once again. Brings us nicely into the next thing on my list and it's the NARS liquid blushes. Now NARS had liquid blushes before and they used to come in a little pump bottle. This new iteration of the NARS liquid blushes, they come with like a little doe foot applicator style and the colors look absolutely beautiful, which I'm not surprised by. NARS is a company known for their amazing blushes and their blush colors. But for me, the packaging is the number one hindrance because I know I know myself. I know what I'm drawn to. I know what I like. And when it comes to blush, I'm going to choose a cream blush in a pot uh, like this over something that's in a little tube with the doe foot applicator. That just... That's just the type of person that I am. Like this is my favorite type of packaging for a cream blush. I don't mind a stick either, but a stick isn't my favorite either. Like this is my favorite. And it's probably the reason why I never bought into the Rare Beauty blushes either. The next product on my list is also from NARS and it's one of their more recent uh, releases. It's the NARS Light Reflecting Under Eye Brightener. This comes in a pot packaging, but it has a radiant finish and it's supposed to be a nice brightening medium coverage under eye corrector slash brightener. It says here it's an advanced makeup skincare hybrid formula that illuminates the under eye area by targeting dark circles and dullness for brightness that lasts up to 24 hours. The claims are very, very lofty and it's a type of product that I would 100% be interested in. Um, I just have a product that does that and this is my holy grail under eye product for this purpose and it's the Sicily Phytocernic Claw eye concealer with botanical extract. I use this in shade number two. I've been using this for years and this is just the one that I always go back to. It's very, very expensive. I only buy it on sale. Sicily does like a 25% off friends and family sale every year. That's usually when I buy one of these. One of these tubes usually lasts me about a year and a half. So even with daily use, and I literally use this every single day, I can wear this by itself. I can layer this underneath concealers. Just makes my under eye area look a little bit better, cancels out any darkness, and it just, it's very undetectable. It doesn't look like I have makeup on. I can just wear this. Maybe by the time I finish this, if I'm still, interested in the NARS. The next product on my list is the newest release from Westman Atelier and it's the Sheer Illuminator, the liquid super loaded highlighter. A supercharged complexion enhancer with long-term benefits and an instant ethereal glow. It comes in three shades, uh, Peau de Rosé, Peau de Peche, and Peau de Soleil. This is Sandra from the future editing this video. I also wanted to add in the newly launched Chanel Number no. 1 Illuminator. This also comes in three shades. It sounds very, very similar to the Westman Atelier, so I figured might as well slot it in here and add it to the list. I haven't been in the market for a new highlighter for a while, and I am happy with what I have. Like, my current favorite highlighter is the Lisa Eldridge uh, Cosmic Rose. I don't know, like, maybe by the time I finish this, I will be in the market for the Westman Atelier, but... Like, just look at this. This is, like, dewy skin in a bottle. So yeah, I have a product that that I'm really happy with that does the same thing. I also have the Auric Glow Lust if I want more of that olive undertone. And I really love both of them. So I'm just not in the market for a liquid highlighter right now. I also have the Armani Fluid Sheer. That one's more of like a blush topper. That one has a bit more pigment to it. The, the bronzy rose one that I have. So I'm good. Like I, I have three different undertones of, of liquid highlighter and they're products that I really, really enjoy. So I just cannot justify 
I just cannot justify the the Westman Atelier one, but I do like the fact that it's um it's not super blinding and super metallic. It's a complexion enhancer. It's something that it's almost like um, a Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter type of product in which like you can use it mixed in with your foundation. If you want to give your foundation a little boost, you can wear it all over as a primer. If you really want to amp up the glow, you can just use it on the high points of the cheeks as a highlight. It's exactly the type of liquid illuminator, the type of highlighting product that I love. And yeah, the undertones, oh, especially Peau de Peche is just, is such a great, such a great shade. I've been so tempted by like the potted version of it for years. I can appreciate this Westman Atelier launch from afar, but I certainly don't need another liquid highlighting product in my life. And chances are you probably don't either. But if you are in the market for a new one, this would be a lovely luxury option. Just keep in mind, Westman Atelier, it's a clean beauty brand. Stuff can go bad quickly. Next on my list, we have the newly reformulated, revamped Dior blushes, the Dior Backstage blushes. Rosy Glow has been an iconic product for years. It kind of went viral on TikTok. It had its moment. And then obviously Dior wanted to capitalize on that, on the success of that. And they decided to kind of bring out multiple shades, part of the, the Dior kind of rosy glow backstage blush family. So now they have a variety of shades. I don't know if it was just the particular tester that I touched, but they seem to be a lot more, like almost a lot more chalky and powdery that they, than they used to be. So I'm not really sure what they tinkered with the formula, but it's not, it doesn't seem to be as silky as, as I remember it being. But nonetheless, I'm at capacity with blush. Something just has to really, really be special in order for me to justify it. Um, and the Dior just isn't special enough. My last anti-haul, um, we had talked about the Hourglass eyeshadow sticks and the Victoria Beckham Beauty eyeshadow sticks that had just launched. And now, just a, just a few short weeks later, we have three more eyeshadow sticks that are hitting the market. There must be some type of like beauty trend forecaster somewhere that consulted with these brands and that told them that eyeshadow sticks are going to be the next big comeback in, in the beauty world because I just think it's so funny when when everybody just launches the same thing at the same time, but they all kind of claim to be innovative in what they're launching, but it's it's not, it's, it's an eyeshadow stick. It's not reinventing the wheel. We've had eyeshadow sticks for a long time. There's not much you can really innovate when it comes to an eyeshadow stick. You know what I mean? Like it's, we already have great formulas on the market. So the, the three that are joining the ranks here are Make Beauty. Make Beauty is actually a brand that I really like and it is a brand that I'm very drawn to. I love their aesthetic. I love their colors. They, they're they really modern and fresh. Their undertones, everything is really great. Even though I end up talking myself out of most of the things that they come up with, I appreciate what they're doing. It's, it's a brand, it is one of these like newer independent brands that excites me. So I always like to see what they come up with. And yeah, their latest launch is matte eyeshadow sticks and they're all in these beautiful neutrals. So if I was in the market for a neutral matte brown eyeshadow stick, I would probably be going to make beauty for it. They look really great, but I don't need more than more than one, to be honest. This is the only matte eyeshadow stick that I own. It's still going strong. I only ever really use it to like line my, I don't use it all over. I use it just as like a soft defining liner on my upper lash line and on my lower lash line. This is from Sicily and it is shade number 16. And before this, I used to use, I think it was called Taupe by Nude Sticks. I think they still make it Taupe taupe or taupe brown and then after that i had moved on to the sicily and this one is still going strong so theoretically once i use this up would i buy the make beauty one of course but who knows when that's going to happen until then i'm i'm happy with this and this is what i'm using for for that purpose we're also getting matte caviar sticks from laura mercier and i could have sworn that laura mercier had matte caviar sticks before but perhaps this is just an addition to the to, to the range. The Laura Mercier caviar sticks are classic. My favorite are still, my favorites are still the metallic ones though. Amethyst is such, such an OG favorite of mine and I still really, really love it. My eyeshadow style, my preferences has, has changed a little bit and I just, I don't use 
eyeshadow sticks all over anymore. I only ever use them to like define my lash line. So it takes me a long time to get through one of these products. I also have some lighter colors of the Laura Mercier that I like to use almost like eyeshadow toppers or just on the inner corner of my eyes. So I just use a very small amount at a time. So by the time I use these up and I'm in the market for something new, oh my God, it's gonna be a long, a long one. And it's just not the type of product that I reach for every single day. So I'm sitting that one out. And then the other brand that is um, cashing in on the eyeshadow stick revival is Rare Beauty. They're launching eyeshadow sticks as part of their fall collection. They all seem to have more of like a metallic shimmery finish, beautiful shades, but again, I already have my bases covered and it's, I think if I was more into eyeshadow sticks, like I used to really, really be into eyeshadow sticks several years ago. I used to use them as a one and done. I just have one and done shadows in pots or just old school eyeshadows that I, that I gravitate towards more. I'm going to end this video on two things that I'm super, super, super tempted by and things that I will probably be buying in the next couple of months. The first is a fragrance and I am just, I'm so intrigued by this fragrance. I think the packaging is beautiful. The branding is really cool. It's actually launched by a hair care brand. Um, the brand is called Ceremonia. They recently launched a fragrance and it's called Perfume de la Tierra. And it just sounds exactly like the type of fragrance that I want to wear in the summer. The top notes are bergamot, pink pepper, and basil. The heart is ginger, jasmine, and peach. The base is tonka bean, vetiver, and driftwood. So it just seems to be the most delightful combination of grounding, earthy, woody notes mixed with um, fresh aromatics. I just love the sound of it. And I was chatting on Instagram with um, with someone and she mentioned that to her, the Ceremonia perfume is like a mixture of these two. And these two are like absolute summer favorites of mine. Dia and Durga, Debaser, and Clarins Eau Extraordinaire. Refreshing, woody, citrus, and then this is like a fruity, fig, juicy fig scent. So if the Ceremonia scent is is in this scent family, I think I think that it would be a pretty safe blind buy for me. And then the other thing that I really, really want to buy is the new Dior face and body, the newly reformulated Dior face and body foundation. So excited to get my hands on it. Need to make time to go to Sephora and color match myself again because apparently the shades are different. And I used to use the shade 2WO in the old version of the formula, but 2WO only really matched me in the summer. I don't know, but I also hear that the 2WO shade in the new version of the formula is a lot lighter than the old one. So maybe 2WO will still be my match. Um, so yeah, I need to swatch 2WO 1.5N maybe, see what the situation will be like. But um, yeah, I'm excited because Dior Face and Body was one of my favorite foundations and I hope it's just as good as I remember. And after the foundation fail of the Guerlain Terracotta Latente, um, I'm overdue for a foundation success story, you know? Very curious to hear what's on your radar, what's on your wish list. is there anything new that's really catching your eye that you're interested in um, or are you like me and you're just kind of happy being a spectator for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!